Gas Metal Arc Welding, GMAW, Part 3. Learning Objectives. In this one, we're going to talk about the four gas metal arc welding transfer modes. So we're going to touch base and we're going to talk about um, spray transfer, globular transfer, short circuiting transfer, and pulse spray transfer. Okay, hopefully we punch through the uh, rabbit hole, wormhole that was shielding gases and nobody out there is too traumatized from the experience of talking about shielding gases. I tried to keep it as concise as possible, but we just wanted to expose you to the fact that there's different gases out there as opposed to just, you know, having a one, a one or two line blurb that say, yeah, you can use carbon dioxide or whatever, so... Anyways, here we are. We're going to talk about the four different metal transfer methods. This is what really separates gas metal arc welding from shielded metal arc welding. Short circuiting, globular spray, and pulse spray. These are all um, words that should be added to your vocabulary if you're going to be dealing with welding and especially the gas metal arc welding process. Um, we're going to give you a couple of definitions and then we're going to give you a, a, a little deeper definition. So hang with us. Uh, short circuiting transfer characteristics. At low current and voltage, short circuit transfer occurs. The weld is a shallow penetrating weld with low heat input. Using gas metal arc welding in this mode allows welding in all positions since the weld puddle is so small. In comparison to the other three modes of transfer, this method is the slowest, low productivity. Used primarily for sheet metal applications, this mode produces large amounts of spatter if welding variables are not optimized. This mode is also known as short circuit or dip transfer. You're probably not going to hear dip transfer, but short circuiting is what it is, is for the most part you're going to hear. Globular transfer characteristics, this mode of transfer is obtained at intermediate current and voltage levels or at high current and voltage levels with 100% CO2, shielding gas. Globular transfer has higher heat input and penetration than short circuit transfer. Larger weld pool makes it more difficult to weld in overhead position. It produces significant amounts of spatter. Spray transfer characteristics. Spray is achieved at higher welding currents and voltages with argon or helium-based shielding gas, over 80% argon. This high heat input, deep penetrating weld, limits the applications to flat positions. This mode produces little or no spatter and is known for the high deposition rate and higher productivity levels. Pulse spray arc welding. To bridge the gap between spray and short circuiting transfer, some power sources are able to pulse the amperage many times a second from a low value below the spray transfer range to a high value in the spray transfer range. This takes advantage of the out of position ability of short arc plus the better wetting action of spray arc. Pulsing the current where spray transfer occurs allows for better control for out of position welding. From the sketch here you can see there's four different the four different uh, modes of metal transfer short circuiting, pulse spray, globular and spray. So short circuiting transfer characteristics at low current and voltage short circuit transfer occurs. The weld is a shower shallow penetrating weld with low heat input. Using GMA W in this mode allows welding in all positions since the weld puddle is so small. In comparison to the other three modes of transfer, this method is the slowest, lowest productivity. Used primarily for sheet metal applications. This produces large amounts of spatter if welding variables are not optimized. This mode is also known as short arc or dip transfer. That's the one you got on the lower left hand side. The globular transfer characteristics. This mode of transfer is from an intermediate current level, current level and voltage level or at high current and voltage levels with 100% CO2 shielding gas. If you're just using 100% CO2, 
you can crank the voltage up as high as you want and you're not going to get anything other than globular transfer. You can never get to spray if you're using carbon dioxide. Um, this has higher heat input and penetration than short circuit transfer. Larger weld pool makes it more difficult to weld in the overhead position because it's like you're you're heating the metal up. So it's trying to, it's like trying to weld with water overhead or trying to get water to freeze on the ceiling. It's just not going to work, especially if you're using hot water, and that's kind of what you're doing here. Um, and it also uh, produces significant amount of spatter. It's a messy one if you don't get it dialed in right. Um, so then we go on to spray. The spray and pulse spray transfer characteristics. Um, spray is achieved at higher welding currents and voltages with argon or helium based shielding gases. Remember we talked about you can't get a spray with 100% CO2. Um, you need over 80% argon to get spray. So if you're using like a 75-25, um, a 75% argon, 25% CO2, you can't get to spray. You can get to globular, but not to spray. Um, this high heat input, deep penetrating weld limits the applications to the flat position because you're basically um, just pouring hot water into something. Uh, and I try and use the water analogy in the aspect of trying to get it to freeze. You can't get water to freeze on the ceiling, especially not, you know, 150 degree water. Whereas if the water's like right at 32 degrees and you're trying to get it to freeze on the ceiling, you got a better shot. So that's kind of where short circuiting is. I don't know if these analogies are, you know, really exactly 100%, but that's kind of how I try and visualize it. So spray only works in the flat position. You can do flat and flat fillets. Um, but with spray, you can get some really high deposition rates. You can just pour the coals to it and really put down some weld metal. Um, pulsing the current, that's taking spray, but you're pulsing it. And the spray transfer occurs and allows for better control and out of position welding. So if you wanted to use it in overhead or maybe some limited situation where you're going uphill or downhill. But anyways, the pulse spray is a variant of the spray and you're going to need, once again, over 80% argon to get you into the spray. Short circuiting transfer. The short circuiting mode of transfer actually involves short circuiting the welding arc from 20 to 200 times each second. This mode of transfer does not depend on gravity but on actual contact between the electrode wire and the workpiece. Therefore it can be used in any position. Overhead, uphill, downhill. Direction of vertical welding can be either upwards or downwards. Heat input is low so it can be used successfully on thin sections. Penetration is understandably less than the other two modes of transfer. So what's that telling us? Well, if we look at our five little sketches here in this diagram, we'll start with number one on the far right side. The wire touches the metal and it shorts out. Number two, the high current flow melts the end of the wire and a droplet is formed. Number three, the current pinches off the droplet and the arc stops, just momentarily. I'm not gonna put a time value with that, but momentarily. For a short period of time, that arc stops. As the wire continues to move, the arc restarts. Then we're to number five, the wire touches the metal and the process continues. So you've got this uh, never ending cycle of the wire touching, the current pinches off a droplet, the arc stops, the wire touches again. So that's why it gives you a very distinctive sound. Um, the process is recognizable by a sharp buzzing or crackling sound. This is the most common method of transfer. Um, you need to really know what you're doing to set the speed and voltage. You don't really need to know what you're doing, but you need to be cognizant of the fact that for this process to work correctly, you need to set the 
the voltage and the wire feed speed to parameters that will allow this short circuiting transfer mode to function correctly. The wire speed and voltage can be correct and the weld can be too hot or too cold. But this is good for uh, thin sections, out of position welding, uh, welding open roots in some situations, sheet metal it's good for. Um, just uh, It's one of the most popular modes of transfer there is for gas metal arc welding, if not the most popular um, transfer method for gas metal arc welding. The globular transfer mode functions with nearly any shielding gas and is the intermediate transfer mode between short circuiting and spray arc. Short arc is going to run with lower voltages and spray arc is going to run with higher voltages. This is kind of that intermediate level. Kind of like, you know, you got Goldilocks and the three bears, you had the baby bear which would be short arc, this is mama bear, and then papa bear would be spray arc. I don't know why I brought the bears into it, but anyways, this is the intermediate level. This is the 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 transition zone between the two other modes. Um, the end of the electrode melts until the force of gravity overcomes the attraction of the electrode wire. This then causes the transfer of the molten globule to the workpiece. Low current density results in erratic arc and globules of metal larger than the diameter of the wire. This involves higher current values than short circuiting, but lower current values than spray arc. This has higher heat input and penetration than short circuiting transfer. Larger weld pool makes it more difficult to weld in the overhead position than short circuiting. It also produces a significant amount of spatter. So those are the things to keep in mind with globular transfer. Generally this is used for flux cord arc welding. You generally don't use a hard wire in the globular transfer mode. Sometimes you do. It can be done. But it just depends on what you're trying to accomplish. I'm, I'm speaking in generalities here. The spray arc mode of transfer is by means of very small droplets of the fused electrode wire, none of which exceed the diameter of the wire in size. Successful spray arc transfer requires argon or an argon-rich shielding gas mixture. Carbon dioxide, once again, is not going to get you to the spray arc happy land you just can't get there from here. And high current values. Uh, the results are high heat input, maximum penetration, and a high deposition rate. The arc force propels the droplets to the metal. Remember with globular you're waiting for gravity to do the work? Not here. In this instance the arc force propels the droplets to the metal. The puddle is larger and more fluid, which means a relatively large weld puddle is a characteristic of this mode of transfer which limits the use of this mode of transfer to flat position groove welds and flat and horizontal fillet welds. The high current density results in deeper penetration. The high current also results in high deposition rates. Process results in a hissing or a whispering sound. And I didn't really touch on that too much but each one of these processes and we're going to touch on uh, pulse spray transfer. All four of the gas metal arc welding processes have a completely different sound. Um, it's hard to explain um, until you've been around it, but you, good welders can set their welding machines utilizing the sound. Um, I've helped guys set their welding machines and I can hear them welding and I can tweak it because I know what it's supposed to sound like. So you're adding voltage or you're taking away wire feed speed or whatever, but the sound is one of those things that just can't be understated here too. So um, just be cognizant that different transfer modes have a different sound and that's due to the nature of how the metal is being transferred from the wire to the base metal. So Pulse spray transfer. Um, you're just basically taking spray transfer and you're, you're, you're pulsing the, 
the uh, the current. So instead of having just a constant level of current, you're going to have a variation on the current level. So instead of have you're you're varying how much heat is going into the metal, which is going to allow you to have it uh, a weld pool that's really hot and it's going to cool down. And then it's going to get be really hot and cool down. Um, in the pulse p spray transfer uh, method, the current alternates from a desired welding current to a background current. And this is all done with electronics and all the major manufacturers have their specific trademarked variation of the pulse spray transfer and you know various explanations on why theirs is the best. Uh, I haven't delved into this too much but if you need to use pulse spray, tr pulse spray transfer there's people out there that can really explain it and put a lot of time and effort into it. But basically it is spray transfer using electronics to vary the amount of current that is going into the um, going into the weld puddle. So uh, the advantages are better control of the welding parameters, out of position welding, and you can weld on thin metal with spray as opposed to having to use short arc. Which if you're using a spray a uh, spray pulse transfer it's going to be faster than just a short arc and you're probably going to have less cleanup so those are some things to be cognizant of if you need to go down the pulse spray transfer route of gas metal arc welding in this one we touched base on the four gas metal arc welding transfer modes short circuiting which is the lower voltage globular transfer which is the middle spray transfer which is the higher voltage and then pulse spray which is a version of the spray but it uses a variation um, it varies the quantity of electricity that's going through the wire so it's kind of a bumblebee buzzing sound um, transfer method um, it should also be noted that this ties into the shielding gas choices that you make previously. So we touched on shielding gases. So these all tie together.